Luke chapter 11, verse 9. And I shall say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then being evil know how to give gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Shalom Akiyam, this is Yahweh a minister of Yahweh Shammashiach by the will of Yahweh to the church of Yahweh here in Babylon the Great and throughout the four corners of the earth to those that are sanctified in Yahweh Shai and called to be saints grace and peace to you from Yahweh our Father and from our Lord Yahweh Shammashiach as you see here going into a lesson concerning you know the Holy Ghost or also known as the Holy Spirit and uh, just kind of you know dealing with the you know the spiritual aspect of things um the non-physical realm you know the invisible world uh, that's in and around us that we cannot see and part of that aspect is the holy spirit and uh, this is very important that we go over this topic because with us going into the series on baptism you know by the grace of the lord of us being able to you know get into that topic heavily over the last few months um, we don't want brothers and sisters to be fully disconnected from what it is also that is important as part of what they're supposed to receive. Okay, so, you know, what we're going to do is kind of just make sure that we go into, you know, this topic is, is going to be a series, you know, concerning the Holy Spirit and its functions as well. So we're going to go on into, you know, the word for Holy and Holy Spirit. Uh, the word there is Strong's G40. We'll play it. Strong's G40. Hagias. Hagias. All right, so that word there is Hagias. Now, this is for the word for holy. It's used uh, throughout the Greek part, of course, the New Testament. The word holy, 161 times for Hagias, 61 for saints, 4 for holy one, and 3 other miscellaneous times. Outline of biblical usage, most holy thing, a saint. Okay, now mainly it's used for the holy, um, anything holy, and including the Holy Spirit, and it also for saints. Um, this is very important that we understand this because we see here that having the Holy Spirit is what partly classifies someone as a saint. Meaning that in order for someone to be a saint, they're going to have to have inherited at one point the Holy Spirit. And this is very evident as we've gone through the red letter, we've gone through the epistles, and we've seen over and over again the correlation with getting into the faith, being baptized, receiving of the Holy Spirit, which also occurred prim primarily first, the prime person, the first person was Yahweh Shai, in which he was showed us that walk. So going on as well, All right, so now we're also gonna go into the word for spirit. Now, of course, this is Strong's G4151. We're gonna go ahead and play it, the word. Strong's G4151, Numa, Numa. Okay, so the word there is, is Numa. Now, we go into there for spirit. Uh, this is very important because, you know, just like we said earlier, uh, some of the words that's used and people are scared to get away from now because of, you know, of new speak or because of, uh, you know, pretty much traditionally, maybe not using that word. Uh, just kind of make sure that when we read the scriptures, we have a better understanding of, you know, the places in which words are, pre are pretty much used. Now, when you go into the word for pneuma, which is primarily used to work for a spirit, you know, so that's the second part of the word Holy Spirit in the Greek, of course. Now, 111 times is used for spirit. 89 times is used for Holy Ghost. 13 times for Spirit of God, Spirit of the Lord, five times. My Spirit, three times. Spirit of Truth, three times. Spirit of Christ or Mashiach, two times. Human Spirit, 49 times. Evil Spirit, 47 times, meaning that it was referenced in context with that. Spirit in general, Spirit, Yahweh Shai's own Spirit, Yahweh Shai's own Ghost. 
So it's clearly the word ghost is not a bad word to use. Um, in fact, you know, I'm not going to go into it, but if you go to etymology online, you know, feel free to look up the word for spirit and ghost. Um, so that way you can kind of see the correlation between the two and how you actually seen them bring bar up as synonymously. The word there, from what I understand for ghosts, uh, goes back to, you know, a different time period of English language, whether it was um, a Saxon uh, tongue or a Francian or even when you go into some of the Dutch tongues, G G Germanic tongues, they use that word as well. Um, hence the reason why the word is synonymous with different things that we even say even today. Like when you see somebody on the field, uh, maybe that's plays football, they've ran a lot of yards, or they're playing basketball, they're running up and down, and you see them you know, put their hands on their knees, they say the, that they're gassed. Well, that word for gas actually comes from basically losing their spirit or fight. They've been slowed down internally. Um, and they're not able to do as much as before. Okay, so it's very important that we understand exactly, you know, these type of words. And it's good to understand, you know, a little bit of language and the history behind it, you know. So that's the reason why, you know, the title of this lesson is called Paranormal Activity, the Holy Ghost intro. Okay, the whole point is to really, you know, get brothers and sisters to understand, you know, what this is about because a lot of people are not really respecting you know the holy spirit as its own entity in fact what i'm going to do i'll even bring in you know this part of the biblical usage now we do know when you go into this third person of the triune god and holy spirit co-equal co-eternal with the father and the son the trinity doctrine is actually incorrect because the 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 father yahweh yahweh shai being the son and holy spirit are three different entities that just work in unison with each other, meaning that they're all on the same accord. But it doesn't mean that they're all part, they're all like um, part in one person. It doesn't make any sense. And it's clearly set, even expressed in that way in, in the red letter. They're all considered separate of, uh, of their own, meaning they have their own personas. Okay. And that's very important to understand because. A lot of people that are out there that have are, are teaching about what is the spirit, what is the Holy Spirit. I've had people say, you know, the brothers out there in Dallas, one body in Yahweh Shai said that the spirit is the law and got completely stumped because one, a lot of the information that brothers is getting is coming from old one West, which basically in some ways at certain points or another, or even amongst the break off started teaching away uh, from the persona or or, or the helper, the comforter, uh, that is the Holy Spirit. And it's amazing to me how um, the Holy Spirit has been completely pushed aside and from, you know, the talk of our, you know, our walk, you know, our ability to fight and battle in this current world and the aspect of it, help, of the Spirit helping us to inherit uh, the kingdom, meaning to guide us the right way to inherit everlasting life. Okay, so there's a lot of heavy things about that, which this is part of the pro uh, whole point of the series. Now, I'm going to go ahead and skip down, okay, uh, to A. It says, sometimes referred to in a way in which emphasizes his personality and character, meaning that the Holy Spirit has his own personality and character. And see, even this is very true, and we're going to show that, you know, as we go through the series, uh, this very fact. Sometimes referred to in a way in which it emphasizes his work and power the spirit of truth never referred to as a depersonalized force now the interesting thing about this whole thing with people finding out the israel is that the whole aspect of the gospel is to get us back onto the father and part of that is for us to understand the things that we've also lost okay and including the understanding of the spiritual realm and that uh, how it operates around us and how it impacts our life now the interesting thing in part c of this definition it says it never referred as a depersonalized force but that's what guys have done they've basically said that the spirit is the law god said it's the scriptures okay uh, we've heard this many times and then it's like a battle back and forth between who can basically sound be more wrong and not basically stick to what the scriptures say. 
you know and the thing about it is the reason why we got to bring this up is because of the fact that the that if a brother or sister cannot respect the entity that is the holy ghost or holy spirit then it's going to be very hard for the holy spirit to really reveal itself in their life in their walk or even to even come upon them uh, for them to believe you know because they did they haven't acknowledged that it's supposed to be in their life and it, then it's run then the spirit is rendered you know useless okay and that's why we can't be carnal we got to be spiritual a lot of things have happened in babylon that has jaded a lot of brothers and sisters uh, particularly the baptist church where you got guys that are like they don't even want to even refer to anything anything as the holy spirit or holy ghost or even the importance of it because of the trauma that they've experienced growing up and uh, what they've seen so this is to kind of you know peel back that and, and really take care of that trauma and injury that's occurred here in Babylon uh, with the mentality of our people, right? And hopefully reaching those that are meant to be called and chosen uh, to be saints uh, in the name of Yahweh Shad. Now, we're going to go in the beginning in Genesis chapter 1. It says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So we see here in verse 2, in the very beginning, that the Spirit of, of God, or right, of, of Yahweh and Allah is mentioned. Now, why would it be mentioned so early if it wasn't important? It has, that shows you the importance and the relevance it, this, this has for us. That's the reason why we're going to go through this series and we're going to basically, you know, take away and... and get rid of the the deep personalization that has occurred uh through false doctrine uh through people basically having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof and we're going to re-establish and put back respect into the persona all right that is the holy ghost okay and that's the whole point of this series and i think after the series uh we believe that brothers and sisters will be edified and have a very very good understanding of the Holy Spirit and its function and its importance to us, you know, within the roles and body of the church, right? Meaning the body of believers in Yahweh Shai, okay? Not a group as you've seen in the last lesson and not just one particular place on the planet, but all believers throughout the four corners of the earth that are meant to enter in. Now, I'm going to go into that word for spirit in the Hebrew, okay? So the word there for spirit is Rawak, okay, that's Strong's H7307, and as you see, uh, the way it's used, spirit, wind, breath, side, mind, blast, vein, air, anger, cool, courage, and you see here, uh, wind, breath, mind, spirit, okay, so the spirit in which, you know, is inside of the living being, the, this part, it says here, the spirit of the living breathing being in man and animals as a gift preserved by god god's spirit departing as death disembodied being okay so meaning that it could be it could leave it leaves the body on upon Sauron's death just like yahweh shai told the uh, told the father he said into thy hands i command thy spirit my spirit so the spirit left and went back unto the father further proof of what happens and further proof that Yahweh Shai very much understood what he had upon him. Pretty much finish it off. We're going to go into John chapter 3 and verse 5. It says, Yahweh Shai answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. Now, as we stated before, being born of the water is referring to your water baptism in the name of Yahweh Shai for the remission of sins. Then also being born of the Spirit means receiving of right the Holy Spirit. Those are the two and those are the uh, ways of entry, you know, into the kingdom. Doesn't guarantee when you get baptized and receive the Holy Spirit that you're going to make it, but that is the starting point. That is what you would need to do. Now, for this case of us going into this particular topic, we're dealing with the Spirit and it's a, and the importance of inheriting that holy spirit and that's the reason why i'm going to go through you know some of these various areas throughout the, the scriptures to kind of really hone in on what the holy spirit is verse six 
that which is born of the flesh is flesh that which is born of the spirit is spirit okay so being of the stock of Abraham Isaac and Jacob is not enough you have to be born in the spirit so that's the reason why he, he's talking about this he's is he talking about being born in the spirit holding a, a, a your Bible in your hand he's not talking about that this is you know God's saying that it's just strictly just they un we, they got it because they understand the scriptures and they don't understand the scriptures they even denying the importance of even having the Holy Spirit even denying that uh, the existence of the Holy Spirit they just think that it's just, you know, there's just them on their own flesh and will doing it. And that's basically what it is. If you're born of the flesh, it's go you're going to have a fleshy doctrine. You're born of the spirit, you're going to have a spiritual doctrine. Okay? Verse 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth so is everyone that is born of the spirit okay so that is exactly you know what we're been you know talking about is the importance of that you know and that's the reason why you know we want to make sure that brothers and sisters are edified um, and they have a better understanding so that way they can understand exactly you know what they're getting into what is the expectations you know a lot of uh, false doctrine is out there to tell brothers and sisters otherwise um, and that's, you know, part of the problem of the confusion, you know, of these different doctrines. And we have to basically have a better understanding. We have to uh, really not just sit back and just say, okay, that's just what it is. No, you know, this is uh, not what it is. We're going to basically have to get into some of these different subjects uh, because it just like in that loop in the beginning, that's not even the actual I've rarely, I can't even recall where I've seen a, a One West break off camp um, that has actually taught that, which shows you that they they de-emphasize, they depersonalize the importance of receiving the Holy Spirit, which is a gift given from the Heavenly Father, which is better than any other gift that could be given on the planet. And we're going to, that's partly what we're going to go into. So, you know, hopefully this is edifying and uh, as we continue on, you know, hopefully, you, you know, brothers and sisters uh, out there uh, that have not been taking heed to this will put some respect, you know, on the Holy Spirit. So, again, I want to give all praises and glory to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, and peace and blessings to you, brothers and sisters, throughout the four corners of the earth, waiting on the second coming of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai, called and sanctified to be saints in the world to come. Shalom.